Now this is RV Vagabond Jerry in Elkhart, Indiana. And I'm here to see the RV slash MH Hall of Fame Museum. And the MH you might think stands for motorhome, but it's actually manufactured housing. But about 90% of what they have here is about RVs. So I'm going to show you around the museum which is something special in the heart of just about every RV owner and first they have a couple models out front I'm going to show you so come on in with me there are a lot of Hall of Fame related things here that I'm not really going to get into or the video would be too long but the RV Dealers Association is something that is very important Here's a motorhome they have out front. This is a Travco 320. Let's take a look in here. Oh, nice upholstery. Got twin beds up front. That's unusual. And the sofa. It's big enough for someone to sleep. And the double bed back here. So this sleeps five people. Using the sofa, you got two tables here to use. Doesn't have a dinette other than that. Nice kitchenette though. And this one must have been owned by a Philadelphia Eagles fan. <laughs> Let's take a look at the inside. Yeah, definitely dedicated to the Eagles. Football shaped serving dishes. It's a shower. And this is the football viewing room. <laughs> Two bunks and a sofa. There's where you watch your football games. Another TV up front. First they have a model RV manufacturing plant which shows the various stages that RVs go through. Carpet, floor, cabinets, walls, then they put on the roof, electrical, you can see the electrical wires here and then the roof decking and then the rubber or fiberglass roof is applied then they put on the windows the slide outs doors and drawers then they put in the appliances furniture and the final finishing and believe it or not quality inspection <laughs> now I'm going to go through some of the various travel trailers they have here down the road this is a 1913 Earl model travel trailer very simple with a large really large dining table and cabinets is all it has and it is pulled by a Model T <laughs> here's a 1958 22 foot Airstream and this I think is the world's smallest Airstream also from 58 and it actually has a toilet and a shower this one's called a covered wagon. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, really dark brown. Well, it has a kitchen and a bed. This is one of the very first Fleetwoods. 
which was made in 1950. Two small seats here, a kitchenette, a bed, and a bunk. And in here, cabinets. This is what we now call pop-ups. Where when you're driving, it's only about this tall. And then you pop up the tent sides. And wow, this one actually has four bunk beds. How about that? And look at this little thing. There's nothing in it but a bed. But back here is the cooking area. This is a 1964 Coachman brand and they are still in business today. Nice little trailer. Here's a much longer one from 66. It's called a Mustang. Got a dinette. Got a shower, kitchenette, and a sofa that turns into a bed. Then back around here is a bunk bed. It's got a refrigerator. It's pretty nice. And this they call a house car. does look more like a house. Now this is what's called the Leprechaun model. And this is one that I see most often, I think, driving around the highways, is these Leprechauns. That was a big seller, still today. This is interesting. May West house car. <laughs> Driver's seat, dinette. Well, not much luxury here, actually. Funny, they called them house cars back then. <laughs> Look at this driver area. <laughs> Here's a night. 1967 fan luxury liner. I can go in this one and see just how luxurious it is. Well, it's got a long bench, two long bench seats here, the dining table. I think that extends and pulls out, and these make into beds. And got a Stove top and an oven, a sink, refrigerator, Friggy King. <laughs> and then back here is a double bed. The back is not lit up, but there is a toilet and a shower back there. And here looks like an older one. Let's see what this is. 28, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. 28 Pierce Arrow house car. Wow. I can't go inside this one. Now this is a total custom motorhome built on a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado chassis. Boy, that is an extremely <laughs> unusual looking one. I had a friend who had one similar to this. Instead of a pop-up, it's a pop-back. And what's back here is the bed. And it puts on a support like that to give it some support with the weight. Otherwise, it's just really small travel trader 
This is a more traditional style pop-up. But this one was back from 1968. Now this, folks, is a 42-foot travel trailer. Wow, that's, I think, is the largest travel trailer I've ever seen, which requires a pretty strong truck to pull it. And I don't think they build trucks like this, but I know there's a company, I saw them online, where they take pickup trucks and convert them specifically for either towing heavy trailers or a built-in fifth wheel. They convert them like this and instead of having the big open bed, they have cabinets like this for storage. Let's go up into this one. Oh wow. It's got a sewing machine. This is just like a living room, or maybe this is the sewing room. <laughs> then at the kitchen here. Oh, I got a regular household type refrigerator, at least as they were back then. An oven, two bunk beds, and chest of drawers. And then back here is the master bedroom, although it doesn't have a bed. Here's the back door, the screen door, air conditioner, and a sink, toilet, and a tub, like you would have in a small apartment. This is a 1939 and you do have to duck <laughs> to get in. House trailer. And here's another odd one next to it. And another odd one. This, we look into the back here. This looks like it was some kind of a van. It's been converted into a camper. Got an awning here and And cooking things under the awning. How about that? Looks like it's all homemade if you ask me. <laughs> Fleetwood's first ever motorhome. Dodge. And we can go up into here. Well that looks like Somewhat similar to the way motorhomes are now. Dinette, kitchenette, and bedroom. And a lot of windows. Nice. <laughs> well, this is interesting. We can look in here. Very simple. Cabinets, a bed. And that's about it. <laughs> and next is the GMC motorhome. Which was really loved back then. Let's take a look at this. This is a 74 model. What was probably most unique is that it was a front wheel drive vehicle. And these Two rear wheels do not have axles. There's not axles that go across. They're just there to hold the weight of the motorhome. So you go in here and instead of having axles, you have the floor. And it's a much lower riding motorhome than any others. I read that they did that for one reason to make it more stable driving down the highway with all the weight or, or most of the weight 
very low to the ground. Even carried a spare tire, which I wish I could. <laughs> Got a big uh, storage box up there and an air conditioner. If you don't know about the GMC motorhome, look it up on Wikipedia. And I know there's a lot of people who are really wishing they still made those. Now this is called a teardrop trailer because if you turn it around it actually does sort of look like a teardrop. All they have in it is a bed and all of the kitchen facilities are in the back here and there's a big cover so you can even cook in the rain if it's not too bad. And this one is being pulled by a 1930 Model A. And these teardrops are still popular today. They still make them. Winnebago. This is from 1967. It's 19 foot. This was the original traditional look of a Winnebago. And it had a very distinct front to it. with the split windows like that. The engine is right there between the driver and the passenger and right behind him is the toilet and shower combo unit. Some people still use these. They're called the Winnebago Brave. This one doesn't say Brave. It doesn't have a model name on it. I did like this model of a fifth wheel. <laughs> the thing is about four feet long. And I wish I had one of these to put on my coach. <laughs> RV Vagabond. <laughs> they have a lot of toy RVs here. Even bears like to go camping. <laughs> How about that? Now here's a model that's about six feet long. On the second floor they've got this huge library. I don't know what all these books and things are, but they do have some nice models on display here. Some pop-ups, motorhome, big travel trailer, a Winnebago Indian. A lot of the early Winnebagos were named after American Indian. I think a lot of these are collections of RV magazines, which they don't really put out anymore in paper. I subscribed the one for a while, but now it's all online, <laughs> like everything else is. Here's an overlook of their collection of RVs. This is really interesting, especially if you're really into RVs. If you ever get anywhere near northern Indiana definitely want to stop by here if you like RVs. <laughs> Good day folks.